All right, folks, we're here at Peoria for the title matches of today's JVT event. We got both divisions at once today, and we've seen a lot of strikes all day long. We've seen a lot of strikes early on here as we're starting the fourth frame action here at Top Seed Mara Swam. Already has the front three strikes. The backup bowler lets it fly, and she's got herself a cluster down there at the end. Six count ends her string at three. She's getting 33 pins of handicap against Cortez Shank. Here's Cortez back on the show again, looking for his second career title. Won just a couple months ago out in Roswell, New Mexico. He's been on fire on tour, and good light hits, sprays the pins around, but leaves the seven. Choppable little spare here for Swaim, especially with that big backup hook that she throws, but covers it up nicely. Mara also a one-time winner. She won last season, so someone's going to win uh, handicap title number two here. Cortez should be uh, called Cortezone Tez today because he is uh, absolutely sick. No other way around it. Whoa! A couple of the germs knocked that pin over. It's not much bowling ball touched it, but it fell over. It's all that matters. Big Kyle King looking for JBT title number 51 of his unparalleled JBT career, saying that deep inside line, we're on a house today. Swings it way on out and way back and gets that nine pin to fall. He has gone spare strike double in his first four frames. Meanwhile, Mark Curtis looking to break through that for that first career title has started off well with three in a row here. You betcha, make it a front four. A talented bowler from Torrance, California. Cortez, one of the uh, up-and-coming stars on the tour. He practices literally just about every day. And all that practice starting to pay off. This is averages up to 181 now and going up again as he qualified third today on this house pattern at plus 238. Man, yeah, why well, didn't mixes him up? All four bowlers clean so far through the start of the fifth frame. Has, like we said, giving 23 pins, so he's got some work to do as Swaim leads on the scoreboard and plus those extra pins. Yeah, just like that. Right in the one two for a backup bowler righty's pocket. 10 in the pit, early lead halfway through for Swaim. Uh, Cortez just beat Nick Skalicki in the handicap division semifinal match. Meanwhile, Mark took care of Kyle Karpovich, Kyle's first scratch finals in quite a while, so good job out of Kyle to get this far. Curtis looking to make it five in a row to open up. Yeah, you betcha. Totally different Mark Curtis the last couple months. He was started off the season fine and then went into a horrible slump that lasted all the way from basically the Thanksgiving time to a couple weeks ago, and he's popped out of it in a big way and would love to finally get the monkey off his back as a non-titleist here. But. Oh, wow. It's hard to see in the video, but a couple different things. Kyle's using a totally different ball and a totally different line on the right lane. That's a urethane ball, so it's not going to react as violently down the lane. And he's also playing way further right on the lane because of that. He liked to look better out there, but that time, obviously, not the result he was looking for. is a big old split. We haven't had a big old split conversion in our webcast in a while, and we still don't. <laughs> There's a lot of build up for nothing, but we tried. That open frame gives Curtis a huge lead. Marcus has never been closer to a title now. He's got to uh, stay within himself and not worry about that. Let me babble about that. Mara's going to try the wrong side. Now she'll try the right side. Speaking of wrong side, you don't see a backup bowler very often these days. Watch the wrist break in the opposite direction that righty's wrists normally do. Nothing wrong with it, just, you know, we see these two-handed bowlers all the time. Many, many different ways to accomplish the task of bowling, as long as you repeat whatever you're doing, that's all right. High that time, though, and leaves the 2-4. House pattern today, like I talked about, leads to a, very, a relatively high scoring cut, not astronomical. Took plus 21, or a little over 204 average in scratch, and plus 9 in handicap. Was enough to be in the top 50%. And another nice job with the 2-4. Mario, your tournament leader today at plus 270, so it was close with uh, Cortez in third only at 238, so lots of bowlers enjoying some success today. Cortez firing up there, and he goes high in the right-hand lane, and 
I know he looks up to Kyle, but he didn't need to uh, imitate Kyle there as he leaves the big split 6 7 10. And he's going to fall behind by quite a bit in this match, too. Well, never know. It's a good spare shooter. Got to get that ball cross lane, have the 6 fly over into the 7. And that would thrill this crowd if he can do it. Be close. Ooh! Thrill the crowd anyway. Real nice try at it, but it is an open frame, and he is way behind now. Kyle won that 50th career title back in Kingman in late December to finish off 2010. Been a busy boy since then, just uh, competed as a youth in the USBC Masters Tournament. Just missed the cut to the top 64. Different uh, reactive ball, way deeper inside on that lane, and there's a good look. See if he doesn't switch back to that on the right hand lane. Curtis now for the six bagger. Oh! Bring it in. See the difference between the bowlers? Many different ways to accomplish the same thing. Mark with a much lower rev rate than Kyle, therefore he is further right on the lane, sort of like Kyle's doing with the urethane ball. Kind of in the uh, track area. Oh! As meanwhile, the runaway Brooklyn carries for Cortez. Mark Harden straight across the lane at the 10. That's how you do it. So even though Mark's got a totally different game from Kyle, their, their break point is essentially the same. It's how you get to that break point. Mark straighter and righter. Kyle way up lefter with a lot more side rotation. In fact, uh, Mark quipped at the start of this match that he should be sponsored by track because that's the only line he plays. I like that, Mark. That was a good line. Very good. As we have a delay for no apparent reason. Mara to get a piece of gum. Oh, Mara needed gum, everybody. That's what the delay was all about. There we have it. Hey, listen, you gotta, you know, do your thing. Gum chewing is how you focus. Chew that gum, Mara. Ooh. Way wide that time. You see the characteristics of a house pattern bring that ball way back. Yeah, that ball is far left. It's got all the way back to the head pin only leave the 10. Cameron Smith finished in fourth in the scratch division today and Aaron Fauché rounded out the top five. I'm having a total mental block of who finished fourth in handicap but I know this guy finished fifth in handicap and shot a 290 doing it. KJ finished in fourth. Martinez of course. That guy shot 290 to jump into the top five today. And KJ doubled to beat him in the first game. Nicely done at the 10 pin. She's grimacing at her wrist, however. That comes into play later on. Mark leads by a lot. How about 44 pins in the fourth? A little light. Good job to break up the bucket, though, and leave only the five pin. Much easier spare. <laughs> it goes without saying at this point, if you follow our tour, that it is never over until it's mathematically over when you got Kyle King on the other side. Working on that strike and carve 10 pins off that lead if he can double up here. Wow, what was that? Did try something totally different there. It didn't look like that was exactly off his hand the way he wanted, and it scored it at the break, and it left the worst possible result. So that was a. Uh, Three wrongs not making a right for him there, unfortunately. Make sure to watch part two on YouTube.